January 27, 2017 was a day security operatives, including prison officials in Imo State, would not forget in a hurry. Call it humiliation of our security agents and you will not be wrong. On that day, gunmen numbering about six stormed the Oweri High Court in Imo State and started shooting indiscriminately. Their mission was simple, to rescue their leader, kidnap Kingpin and armed robbery chief, Henry Onyekachi Chibweze, popularly known as Vampire, who was being arraigned in court that morning. The commando-like operation took the security men at the court, including prison personnel, by surprise. At the end of the barely 15 minutes operation, two persons were shot dead, while scores of others, including security men, received gunshot wounds. When the remaining security operatives snapped out of that surprise, the coast was clear. Vampire and his gang had disappeared into thin air. But Nigerian security operatives will not just back down in the face of this humiliation. So today, we take you through the reign of terror and criminality leading to the eventual killing of one of Nigeria's most notorious and dreaded criminals from Imo State. A few notable things happened in Nigeria in the year 1981. There was a Nigerian general strike of May 1981 over minimum wage, the establishment of the Imo State University. There was also the Catholic Institute of West Africa founded in 1981. And then it was the Yei, one of Nigeria's notorious criminals, was born. Henry Onyekachi Chibweze, also known as Vampire, was born to the family of late Chief Emmanuel and Mrs. Beatrice Chibweze in 1981 in Nwagele, local government area of Imo State. He came from a polygamous home. He was a diminutive man with broad shoulders and a pair of penetrating eyeballs that betrayed his wickedness and ruthlessness. Before he acquired national and international notoriety, Vampire was said to have started his life of crime at the age of 12. He was said to have committed his first murder at that age during a fight with his fellow pupil while still in primary five at Umuokbu Community Primary School in Abaja. It was learned that he ended his formal education in primary five after the murder incident for which his late father had to pay compensation to the family of the victim. After dropping out of school, he refused to learn any trade, but rather joined some hunters from the neighboring community who smoked marijuana and engaged in stealing people's goats and fowls, which they either sold or killed and ate. It was also gathered that Vampire later started a commercial motorcycle business on a higher purchase basis, operating around Isu and Anara in Isia Lambano mostly at night, returning to the village in the early hours of the morning. According to his mother, Mrs. Beatrice Chubweze, Vampire was an evil child as all efforts by his late father to ensure that he became a responsible person proved abortive because all his other children were educated. She also said at the time the family had thought of making a sacrifice to the gods of the land to see if that could make Vampire act responsibly. As time went by and Vampire's criminal streaks were increasing in the community and beyond, his family became worried. He was bringing shame and disgrace to the family. It was in fact gathered that the disgrace and shame brought to the family eventually led to the death of his father, Chief Emmanuel Chiweze, due to hypertension. So vicious had Vampire become in his criminality that members of his family, including his mother, ran away from the village because he was prepared to kill anybody. At the time, it was gathered that he had destroyed the roof of his father's house when he visited the village. Now, having conquered his community, it was time to take his criminal exploits to the entire Imo state and other states as well as neighboring countries like Benin Republic, Niger and Ivory Coast. He wasted no time to form a gang. So sophisticated was his gang that they defied all measures put in place by security agents. Known to be lion-hearted, it was believed that Vampire moved freely in the streets with arms searching for those in his black book. On February 16, 2013, Vampire stormed the Igando, Lagos home of Sandra Ijedima, his girlfriend, and wreaked havoc. 
By the time he was done, Ijedima, her elder sister, praised Ozo and her two children had been sent to the great beyond. But as typical of the being he was named after, Vampire proceeded to a nearby street where one of the elder sisters to Sandra resided and killed the woman and three of her children. The community could not recover from the shock as the news went round for days. But not done, Vampire threatened to eliminate the remaining members of the family he could trace. He would later claim responsibility for the crime, blaming it on theft by his estranged lover. He said, and I quote, Yes, I killed my girlfriend and her parents because she stole 45 million naira from my house. I went to her family house in Lagos, and when she saw me coming, she ran into the house. I went in and shot her and other people in the house. She died instantly, but I don't know how others died. End of quote. After that killing spray in Lagos, the energetic crime buster who headed the now disbanded Inspector General of Police Intelligence Response Team, Abba Kiari, was the officer in charge of Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, in Ikeja at the time. He was one of the first men to race to the scene after the police received a distress call on the incident. The sight of lifeless bodies of the children, their pregnant mothers drenched in their own blood, traumatized him and he may have vowed to track down the person that spilled the blood of innocent children and their pregnant mothers in such a manner. Luckily, few months after, some members of Vampire's gang who masterminded the kidnap of a British citizen, Dixon Lee, at the Mafuloku axis of the airport road in Keja, Lagos, were arrested. They volunteered information indicating that Vampire was then residing with his family in Ivory Coast, but that he usually sneaked into the country to carry out some kidnapping and then sneaked out again. With the arrest and killing of several members of his gang, the police in Lagos concluded that Vampire has been degraded and frustrated. But unknown to them, Vampire was still active, unleashing terror in Imo and other southeast states. At that time, he was said to have kidnapped and killed several persons, including wife of a traditional ruler, member of Imo State House of Assembly, three of his uncles at his hometown in Agba area of Imo State, businessmen and several others. On January 26, 2015, a Malaysian-based businessman, So Poruchuku Iguaniba, was kidnapped by vampire when he accosted him in a car wash located around World Bank area of Uweri, Imo State. A brother to the businessman said that vampire cited his brother's Range Rover SUV at the popular car wash and demanded to see the owner. He said, and I quote, The people operating the car wash didn't know who he was and they ignorantly called my brother and told him someone was looking for him. He ordered my brother into his own car and with a gun and took him away. That was on Sunday and he didn't contact us for ransom until Wednesday when he demanded for 100 million naira. He said they begged Vampire that they didn't have such an amount of money. Then Vampire reduced it to 50 million and upon pleading, he further reduced it to 30 million and eventually stopped at 20 million. The brother again said, and I quote, We told him that all we could raise was 5 million and he refused. After several pleadings, he told us that if we fail to pay the money, it will be the last time we will hear from him. My brother was the only person in his camp, but he took my brother to Ugoji area of Umbatulo, local government area of the state, and shot him seven times. He dumped him inside a gutter and left him to die. That was around 8 p.m. Few hours later, my brother saw a security man and begged him to take him to hospital. The security man was scared and he went and called the police, who later took my brother to the hospital. My brother was in the hospital for three weeks and died on February 23, 2015, from his wounds. Despite recording a few successes at committing crime, Vampire, on a couple of occasions, almost met his Waterloo. In one of his operations, Vampire was said to have laid siege on his prey at a hotel in Imo State without knowing that he was trailed by agents of the Department of State Services, DSS, 
who caught up with him in the company of one of his girlfriends in his hotel room. He reportedly escaped through a window of the storied building he jumped out from, but after sustaining a bullet wound. His girlfriend was not that lucky as she was arrested. But in July 2015, he ran out of luck as men of the Department of State Services DSS apprehended him while he attempted to kidnap some judges attached to the Imo State Electoral Tribunal. Those arrested along with Vampire were one Hakim Bello from Kwara State, Alexander Ohigidi, his native doctor and a man who claimed to be his treasurer. Also arrested were Vampire's elder brother and wife who hosted him. When interrogated, Vampire confessed that he operated in many parts of Nigeria, Kotonou, Abidjan, where his family resides. He also revealed that his wife, who hails from Cameroon, assumed he was a trader. During his interrogation at the DSS office in Oweri, he claimed he took to crime after his elder brother sent him out of the house when he could no longer pay his school fees. After a little stint with some gangs in the southeast, Vampire said he traveled to Cotonou where he was trained in kidnapping for ransom. In his confession to the DSS, Vampire said, and I quote, I joined the kidnap business because my people did not train me. I have killed many people, but I don't want to be released now. I want to stay in custody for many years so that my brain will cool down. I live in Abidjan with my wife and only daughter. I don't know if she is aware that I have been arrested because she does not know the kind of business I do." End of quote. Vampire was remanded at the Oweri Central Prison from where he also coordinated several kidnappings and gave out his numerous rifles for hire to criminals. Some sources at the prison disclosed that Vampire lived like a king in the prison. He reportedly had free access to his mobile phones and enjoyed regular visits from various persons, including his gang members who brought food and money to him. Vanguard newspapers reported that in November 2015, Vampire was said to have successfully recruited an official of the Nigerian prison service, Chukuma Agin, into his gang and made him set up a kidnap gang that would enable them to raise money for their cases. The six-man gang was headed by one chi boy, also known as Eze Kudele. Agim and four others were later arrested by operatives of the IRT in Oweri and remanded in prison custody. The prison official claimed that they kidnapped a woman and that she paid 5 million naira before her release. According to Agim, 1.5 million naira was given to Vampire, who was their overall boss and owner of the rifles that were used for the operation. Vampire, according to the police, had confessed to have killed over 200 persons during his various operations. The power to set a suspect free lies in the hand of a judge, but that is in the spirit of the law, and since Vampire dedicated his life to working against the laws of the land, his men invaded the premises of Uweri High Court to secure his release on January 27, 2017. It was like a Hollywood movie scene. Witnesses said sounds of gunshot rented the air in the operation which lasted 15 minutes. The attackers, who were said to be inside a sports utility vehicle parked within the court premises, opened fire immediately vampire disembarked from the prison van. Six people, including five prison officials, sustained injuries in the operation. In the end, the attackers achieved their mission. Vampire and eight other inmates were rescued. Now, five days after Vampire's rescue inside the Oweri High Court, the then Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, reportedly summoned members of Abakari's team with marching orders to fish him out within 48 hours or face disciplinary action. The fact that Vampire confessed to have killed 200 people in various operations across the country rattled the police hierarchy even more. The roll call of his victim still remains a shocker to security agents in the country. Governor of Imo State at the time, Rocha Sokrocha was obviously worried by the exploit of the suspect. After Vampire's escape from court, 
Okorocha called a security meeting and pledged to give whoever could volunteer information on his whereabouts the sum of 5 million naira. Now, as expected of any life of crime, after days of frantic search for the dreaded vampire, the end came in the early hours of March 2nd, 2017, after police engaged vampire and his cohorts in a fierce shootout and he was killed. His gang members were however arrested and exhibits recovered from them. The gang members were arrested by 1 a.m. March 2nd, 2017 after a gun battle at Omu Awa Forest in a query local government area of River State. The police special forces working under the supervision of the Commissioner of Police Imo State Command swooped on the hideout of Vampire and his gang and engaged them in a fierce gun battle that lasted several hours. The operation was successfully carried out as the dreaded vampire died during the shootout with the police special forces while all the suspects were apprehended. Now, following his death, Oweri, the Imo State capital, was thrown into celebration when the news of his death filtered in, as people thronged the police command headquarters to catch a glimpse of the corpse of a man who had brought death, sorrow, pain, and agony to their lives. They waited patiently until the IRT operatives who brought in vampire's remains from River State arrived at the headquarters. Rounds of gunfire were shot in celebration as the operatives arrived and the leader of the team, Abakiari, was immediately lifted off his feet by the men the moment he was spotted. The operatives then took the cops round Imo State to reassure the residents that the police is determined to ensure they have a safe society. So, that is the end of the reign of terror of one of Nigeria's most dreaded criminals.